And now I want to show you something that it's really important if you want to publish the visualization later on. So there is something that Tableau calls uh, interactive filters. So far we have some filters, we are doing some filtering in this view, but we want that in the future when we are publishing our visualization, the users that are going to see this visualization or that are going to use it, they, they maybe have the right, uh, the, they, it can be possible for them to interact as well. So we are going to show now how to use these interactive filters. Let's remain here, and we have the category here, but uh, I want to add another field here that is called, um, let's add the field country into the filters. As you can see here now, in the pop-up window, we get a list of all the countries, and then let's say that, okay, we want to use all of them. And we say apply. In order to make this field now interactive, we go and uh, click the arrow button here, and then we say show filter. And as you can see here, in the right side of the panel, now we have all the countries here. And let's do the same about the categories. Let's say show filter again. So now we have two type of filters, one for the categories and one for the countries. What is really good about Tableau is that you can change this type of uh, filters here, the, the way that they are shown here. For example, now they are shown as a checkbox, but if you go here to the arrow, then you can see that there are other options to do so. So you can send, select a single value list or you can select a drop down. So in this case, because there are so many countries on the list, we select the single value drop down. And suddenly, the filter here has changed. And uh, we select all, and we can see that the visualization changed. If we select a specific country, then we'll see that the visualization is changing. So when you are done with this visualization and you are going to publish it, the users that will see this visualization, they will have the same opportunity of working with the filters as you do right now. And of course, we can do the same here for this filter. We can see that there are several options here again. And there is this field here that it's called edit title, where you can say, for example, instead of country, you can say select a country. So it's more user-friendly to another person. He immediately will understand that in order to interact with this visualization, they have to do something here into this filter. And the same goes for the date filter, as we showed before. So let's do that again. Let's grab a date and put it onto the filter shell. And then let's say years and go next. And you can select all of them and say apply. Oops. And then go to the filter and say show filter. And now we'll have the years. And then again here we can do the same and say... Yeah. A single value drop down. Since we have gone so far, now I want to show you something that is really important about visualization. Uh, you can see here this tab that it's called Show Me. And if you click on it, you can see different type of visualizations that Tableau can create for you. This is really important because sometimes you are real specific about the visualization that you want to do. You don't want to let Tableau to be so intuitive and select a visualization for you, but let's say that you have in mind that you want to do a specific visualization. So what you do is that uh, you go to this button, show me, and click it, and then you select one of the visualizations that you would like to show, for example. And let's say that we want to create the chart area. 
as you can see, that it says that the chart area, in order to create a chart area, you should have a date, zero dimensions, but at least one measure. So now that we know the meanings of dimension and measures, we can create a specific visualization. Should we try that? So show me again. Uh, so let's drag and drop the date, the order date, into one of the columns. And then uh, let's have one measure that are the sales. And now you actually can click onto the, this area and you have a visualization, an area visualization. So this is really important that uh, by selecting one of these, you can see what is needed in order to do the specific visualization. By selecting different di dimension, different measures or dates and putting it into the shelves, into the column and the row shelves, you can build all of these visualizations. I think this is really important to know because it allows you to do a lot of things. There are, as you can see, there are a lot of visualization types here. Okay, let's clean this up. And uh, now I, I want to show you how to do a combination of charts. So let's say that you want to see the relation between the sales during a specific period of time and the profit ratio that this product has during this specific time. First thing to do is that uh, we can see here that we don't have the profit ratio. So we can create it. And by creating the profit ratio, we are, we are going to learn now how we can create it other fields, calculated fields based on our data. So first thing to do is that uh, let's try to create a calculated field about the profit ratio. So we select a profit, we click the arrow, and we say create, calculated field, and we see this small window here. We give a name, let's say profit ratio. And uh, if I remember it correctly, the profit ratio, it should be the sum of profit divided by the sum of uh, sales. Let's try it. So now we need to do something here to write a small piece of code. But if you are, uh, if you know a little bit of SQL or SQL or MySQL, it's not so difficult. And uh, you'll see the Tableau is really intuitive. Once you start typing something, he will show you different commands, so it will help you go on. So let's say sum, because we want to do a sum. Sum of what? We want the sum of profit. Uh, let's redo it again. So sum, open parenthesis, and then we say profit. As we can see now, Tableau recommends us one of these fields to use. We want to use this field, the profit field. And then we say, OK, this is divided by sum. We open and close parentheses again. And then we say sales. Again, Tableau recommends us, based on what we are typing, sales. And we say, OK. Now we have the profit ratio here. That's a bit too fast. Ah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Yes.
Okay. So we want to see this relation between sales and profit ratio. So what we do is that we take the order date in one of the columns of the row and we go to month and then we take sales yeah we want it to be as a line this one so now we want in the same axis to have the profit ratio as well so what we do is that we find the profit ratio and we drag and drop it over here to the right side. You'll see this icon here. This is one way of doing a dual axis. And we release it. And now we'll get two lines. One of the lines is saying the sum of sales and the other line is about the profit ratio. But maybe we don't want to see two lines. We want to see something else. Let's say that the, we want to see some bars. So what we do is that we go to the mark box here and we select uh, the profit ratio and then we go to the field that it says automatic and we want to change it and let's make it a bar chart, this one. So now you can see that we have some bars regarding the profit ratio and a line about the number of sales. One thing to remember when we are working with uh, dual axis or combination charts is that uh, we have to synchronize the axis between them. So in order to do that, we go to the right side of the second uh, axis and we say right click there and we say synchronize axis. Oops. And let's say that we want the line to be shown in front of the bars and not behind it. So we say move marks to back. And now we can see that the line is in front and behind is the ratio bars. Uh, I'm going to remove it a little bit, the profit, and uh, in order to show you another way of doing dual axis. So the first way was that uh, we can drag and drop the profit ratio here on the right side. Another way is that we put it here on a row, and we still have this. Now we have two different visualizations with two axes, and then we go to the profit ratio here into the drop down arrow, and then we say dual axis. And then we'll get the same as before. So in the same axis, we'll have these two lines. And then we go here to the profit ratio again and change it into bars. And then go here and say, move marks to front. It, it was actually to front from the previous time. Sorry about that. So we do it again. So there are two ways of doing it. One way is dragging and dropping it into the right side. The other way is putting on one of the shelves and then going to the drop down and select dual axis. Okay, let's name this dual axis. Uh, another one combination chart is that for example, maybe we want to show the, to compare two years for their sales. Let's say that we want to compare the year 2014 and the year 2013. How we can do that? Still, uh, we can do that by creating calculated fields that will uh, contain information only for that specific year, for the year that you ha we have selected to show. So in order to do that, still, we have to create some calculated fields. So let's go to the measures and say click create a calculated field and let's name this field uh, 2014 sales uh, 
now we have to write something, a uh, query, in order to get the specific sales. So we do, we write this if, year, where order date, is equal to 2014. Show me sales for this specific year and nothing else. No more data. So only, year, only sales for this specific year and then ignore everything else. The zero means ignore everything, uh, everything else. We create this field. Uh, it's over here. We say now click to the arrow and then we say duplicate and we have the same field as a copy below and we say edit this field and then we go here and change the name and say 2013 sales. And we have to change the year here so they don't have the same data. We say 2013. And as you can see, once we are done writing, you can see a notification here that Tableau says to you that the calculation is valid. If it was not valid, it will say that the calculation is not valid. Then something wrong is with where you, your code, what you are typing and so on. Let's say okay. So now let's try to do a dual axis or a combination chart for these two years. We take the date and we drill down the date until month and we remove everything else. Then we take the 2013 and put it onto the row shell. And then again, now that we have to do a dual axis, as previously, we take the 2014 and we go here into the right side. And now we have these two years as a lines. Well, it's a visualization, but it seems a little bit not so good. So what you can do is that you can try to change the marks you can try to select another mark, another chart. So you go to the 2014, you click on it, and then we change the mark of a chart from line, let's say that we want to do some circles. And by doing that, now we have some circles about it. So as you can see, there are a lot of opportunities. It depends on what are you asking and how you want the visualization to be. Uh, let's rename this to comparing years. Uh, we are working so far, we are doing a lot of things, but we haven't saved anything. Huh? <laughs> It's really important from time to time to save what you are doing because Tableau it doesn't have an automated save. So if you want to save this file, then you can say save as, and uh, it, will be sh it will be saved as a workbook, which it means that all the calculation that you have done on this workbook, it will be presented there the next time that you will open this workbook. So if you want to save that one, let's say, Tableau tutorial and just click save. And of course you can save it in whatever directory you want. Okay. Uh, now let's go and see a little bit uh, what we can do about map visualization. So let's open a new worksheet. 
And as I told you before, uh, Tablao recognize uh, latitude, longitude, and uh, country, state, city, zip codes, and so on. Since we are talking about Europe, let's take the countries and uh, drag them into the road cell. And then let's take the latitude. The longitude. Uh, no, just a second. Let's go to the show me button and say that okay, we want to map. So we can see now that in order to have the map created, we need a one geo dimension or geo location or zero dimensions or zero to two measures. So Let's have one geolocation, which is the latitude. And then let's have two measures. Longitude. And then uh, let's try the country. Uh, we click on the, now we have the map. Uh, did you follow or should I do it again? Because it was little. Yes. So now we have a map of Europe with the specific countries that are on that list and let's say that we want to see sales on these countries so what we can do is that we can go here to the sales and uh, put it into the color box here now we can see that uh, some of the map changes based on the number of sales and the sum of sales that the country has done it's a different color. What is important here to say is that you can change the color by clicking onto the color and saying edit colors. And then you can see that uh, there is a panel here of different colors that Tableau supports. So let's say that we want this red, red gold here and say apply. You can see that the color changed. Another thing that we can do is that uh, we can drag and drop sales or maybe uh, not sales, profit into the size box here. Now you can see that uh, we can see for every country the profit and the number of sales, the sum of sales that they have done. Yes. Uh, not that I know, no. Uh, clear so far? Uh, let's try to do now a combination of uh, charts while using map visualization. So let's remove a bit sales and profit. Yes. Let's say now that we want to combine uh, the profit and the number of sales. So we select profit and we put it into the color box. And then we want to create another map now before making the combination and onto the other, into the other map. So the other map we can create it by just grabbing a latitude, longitude and put it in one of the shelves. So now we have two maps, but in the second map, we don't want any more the sum of profit, but we want sales, and we are going to put sales into the size. 
and I want to change this from field map to the marks. I want to change the visualization. I want a circle, not a field map. So now we can see that we have some circles onto the second map. And uh, as we showed before, if we want to do a dual axis or a combination of these two charts, then we go to the second one and we say dual axis. And now we have one visualization map, different color for the profit, and uh, some circles in the middle in, in each of the country with the sum of sales. Uh, yeah, maybe you, we cannot see some good the circles. So you can go to the circle box, click on it, and then you can see this panel here that you can change the size of the circle, make them a little bit bigger, let's say. Yes? Are we on? Yeah. Is it possible also to have just the circles without the map figures? So it's sort of a very abstract presentation? Yes. yes. Can you show us that? Yes. Well, the circles without the map? Yeah. Not a map visualization, but only the circle. Only the circles? Yes. Not in a map. Not in a map. Just the circles as they are geographically distributed, but without showing the countries. Ah. Uh, but the map, it will be there. Yeah, it'll, it'll be there, but just so that we only see the circles and not the map. Okay. It's kind of abstract, but, but it might just kind of be interesting. Uh, yes. Let's try it. In this map, without the colors? Or with the colors? Just with the, just with the circles, yeah. Without the... You can grab the sails and put it here into the size. then change these two circles. This one or? Yeah, that's, a, that's almost what I was getting at, but that's much better. It shows sort of the distribution. Can you turn off country there? If everybody is clear until now, we can move forward. Uh, let's say this map visualization. Okay, now let's try and make a, let's see a little bit about the dashboards, how they are created and uh, what are the possibilities there. So we go next by, not to the new workshop uh, icon here, but next by, it's called uh, new dashboard and we click on it. As you can see on the left side now, we have all the different type of visualizations that we did so far. And in order to create a dashboard, it's really easy. You just select one of them and you drag, drop, uh, you drag and drop it by to the big panel here. So let's do that with the first one, let's say. So we get this type of visualization as it was previously into... Maybe we want to add another one. Then we need to drag and drop the second one. And now Tableau, it shows you that it can be onto this side, or it can be horizontally or vertically. It depends on you, what you want to create. So let's say because it's a map, it will take a little bit more space than, yeah. let's do it here. So now we have two visualization on the same dashboard. And you can add as many as you want, but they have to be a little bit uh, nice and properly. Uh, so it, and uh, actually, let's try the one that we used and uh, 
we had some filters on it. It should be this one. And I'll remove this one. Oh no. And I'll remove this one. So as you can see for the second visualization, we have also the filters here. Which it means that once we uh, publish this visualization, the user are going to see this dashboard, but they will be able also to communicate and to interact with the filters. And uh, a new thing that it came up with uh, two th uh, with a 10.0.1 version of Tableau is the device preview. You can do a device preview because here you can see that uh, there are different sizes of the browser of the visualization that you would use. So you can define the width and the weight of the visualization. Uh, you can do a device preview and see how the visualization is going to look like. And actually a really good feature that they have uh, released with this version of Tableau is that now you can do uh, a mobile visualization. You, you just have to select here your device. As you can see here, you have a different thing. It's a generic desktop, a desktop browser with this uh, uh, width and uh, weight. Uh, yeah, like a letter portrait and so on. So it's up to you. And of course, uh, there is a lot to do about formatting. By going here to the format, you can say, okay, I want to format my dashboard. And then here it will appear different uh, features about the formatting. So for example, uh, the fonts, color, or it should be alignment to the left or to the right. The title uh, of worksheet or of the dashboard and so on. And in order to clean the to 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 clean up to clean up the format dashboard, you just close it, and then you are back to the previous uh, dashboard sheet. Okay. Uh, now I have a small exercise for you. Uh, let's try and do a bar chart that uh, it shows sales and profit per product per subcategory. Okay, I think that most of you managed to do it. Uh, actually, you should see something like this. The result was something like this, yeah. Where with uh, this color, the orange color, we can see the sales, and with, uh, in my case at least, with the green color, we can see the profit. Uh, something else that uh, I want to show you before is that uh, the data set that we are using now here is only one, but we can have as many as we want. So if we want to connect to another data set, then we go to this uh, figure here that it says show the start page, and then we can connect to another data set. So let's try that. And now we, we connect to the second one, sample superstore, and say open it. And then it's pretty much the same, but this one is for the US. Uh, it's not for the Europe. The first one was for the Europe. So we drag and drop the orders here again. Yeah. And if we go now, you see that you have two type data sets here. One is for the Europe and the other one is for the US. 
So while you are doing visualization, you can combine data from one data set to the other into the same visualization. Uh, now, Chris, want to say something? I just said, now it's time for my part to put this into library context. I just wanted to step back again and, and talk to you about why you should know this and you know, why it's important to libraries. Mm -hmm. I have uh, a few examples. I have to type these. Can you hold this? Yes. <laughs> I have to uh, search on your laptop here. So the, f the first one, I'm using IE, to, or it's, all, it's Edge now. Um, so the first example um, is something I want to show you called Paper of the Future. Should be one of the first hits here. Not, I can. Now there's a mouse who can. Well, here I'll just. So this is a. Uh, this is this is a, a an interactive paper called uh, it's 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 a, it's a tool called Authoria, and uh, sort of the whole idea behind this was uh, we started off at Harvard trying to demonstrate that we should move beyond the PDF that researchers uh, it's some of the, some of the cases researchers are using uh, an ancient tool programming language called uh, LaTeX to write their papers. And the whole idea was to, to say that you should be uh, writing natively for the web, right? Um, that uh, we're trying to move things forward. And so this is the paper of the future, sort of an idea of how that, how that will be. And so, uh, you know, this is a paper that inserts images, it has tables here. Um, what I want to get down to here, so that's about citing your data. But we also have these, uh, this ability to insert interactive, uh, interactive figures. I believe it's this one up here that's the interactive figure. Um, uh, I don't want help right now. <laughs> um, but maybe I can find it. There was a, there was, there's, we've inserted some code into this paper. And see, so the idea is, uh, in one of these papers, you could insert something like Tableau. Uh, you haven't gotten to that part yet, but Tableau has this uh, interactive dashboard feature. Um, so there's there's a Tableau. There's a gallery of dashboards. Actually, the, my favorite one that I looked up right now um, was uh, this one. Mapping the, Can the Canberra wasp men menace. <laughs> so this is a, a, a Tableau dashboard right here. Um, let's see if it loads. It's a little slow right now. So you can actually map, uh, like, so let's say you can look for nests of this wasp men menace in your neighborhood, and you can sit, so you can filter over here by the, the particular neighborhood. Let's see, Bonner is not, uh, that's not a good example. Let's try this one. Uh, yeah, there we go. There's a wasp nest. <laughs> so you, you can create one of these interactive da dashboards, and uh, it gives you like the code to do this, to drop it into a paper. So like a tool like Authoria, you, you could you know start writing your paper in more of a modern version of like an interactive paper. Um, and so reason why we should know about this is because as 
librarians who are trying to uh, organize this. We're trying to you know, we're trying to preserve it, to catalog it. So just to let you know, these are this is what people are starting to do. Uh, use these things on on the online, and uh, you know I think this is one thing uh, that we can pay attention to as as librarians to to see how we could. Uh, help with discovery of, of this stuff. Um, the other thing is, actually, it's pretty funny, but today, my, uh, my library is teaching a visualization workshop. Um, I think it's this one. Oh, they, this is one that they already taught, but uh, so they're they're teaching Tableau to the students and to uh, various groups on campus. And the interesting thing is, this uh, has been very popular at NC State. Uh, in fact, we don't we can't keep up with the demand. Uh, a lot of groups want to take these classes, and so we're struggling now to keep up with it. The faculty will ask. Uh, the library to come in and teach and uh, you saw that even the data science initiative on campus I can't find my mouse here there it is uh, even the data science initiative is trying to teach Tableau but I find it funny that the I, 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 actually it's a good thing the library beat almost beat the data science initiative to teaching this on campus and was responding to a need but um, they teach Tableau Public. I know we talked about how there's costs involved um, with the subscription, but Tableau Public is free, and students can use that, and it's a great entry point if people want to use it later on uh, for other things. But uh, that's that's uh, there's another another example here of uh, earthquake trends. I think it's that. There are uh, Tableau instances where you can embed them where you can tell a story. Um, this may be not a good example. This is a dashboard. I wanted to show you a story. Um, mm, not sure I'm finding it here. Uh, well. If you if you can find it, there's a, there's a nice example of earthquake trends. Let's see. I pulled it up on my laptop, <laughs> but so uh, there's there's a way to create stories in in Tableau, so you can actually. Uh, walk through different visualizations so you can you can create tabs and and tell a story and I've seen some people use it in presentations so it's another presentation type tool for working with data um, I'm sorry I can't find it right now but that there is an earthquake trends uh, example of that that's pretty useful. Can you put that link on the slide yeah. 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 Yes. Just a quick question. Um, if a scientist makes a paper with an embedded uh, Tableau uh, graph or dashboard, how do we as an institution preserve that 
the paper so that we can show it in the future when Tableau charges money for hosting the content or goes bankrupt or can I catch it with a web crawler or Hello. Okay. Um, yeah, that, there's there's a there's a uh, project called Docker, D O C K E R, um, and that's there's a lot of activity on how to uh, from the from sort of the tech industry side of things. The pain point is trying to share your environment with someone else's, and so uh, they're thinking about it in a different way. But Docker could be very helpful for us in libraries to preserve the environment that was used and to create a container for, for, that, for that and to be able to replay it later. Um, at the moment, though, you have examples like Wayback Machine that just do a static snapshot. And so that, I mean, that's where we're kind of limited at the moment. That's what libraries might do in the interim is, well, let's just take screenshots of this tableau and are nice screenshots, but you know, save it in a, in a static format and then preserve it that way, which is terrible, right? Because you want it to be dyna dynamic still. Yes. Uh, the last thing, or maybe one of the last things that I want to show you, is that uh, once we have the visualization, how to publish it, for example. So, in order to do that. We will first, we have to have a subscription on Tableau Online, otherwise it's not possible. Or you have to have a username or password to a specific server if you are using Tableau Server. But just going through the steps, one can go to the Server tab here and select Publish Workbook. And then type the information about the server if they are going to publish in, into a specific server where a specific user ha has access to it. Or then they can go to Tableau Online and again, it will ask you for a uh, username and password, or if you have a subscription there, which unfortunately, I don't remember my subscription name and username and password, but if you type the username and password here and you say sign in, then your workbook, it will be published into Tableau Online. And the problem with that is that everybody will have access to it, to see the, and to interact with this visualization, so it will not be secure. Okay, and uh, yes, I have a, a small exercise again, so we can do it together or you can try and ask if you have any questions. Let's try to do a scatter plot visualization uh, about uh, the sales and the profit. Uh, and I want to see different colors for each category per sales and uh, different shape size for the subcategories. Uh, is that clear or should I repeat it again? One more time. Yes, uh, a scatter plot uh, for sales and profit where uh, sales can be with different colors based on the categories. 
and uh, the profit based on the subcategories can be in different shapes. Yeah, the last part was uh, that the profit based on the subcategories or on the categories with different uh, shapes. So since we are here, there is something extra here, the ship mode, which uh, it must not confuse you. But uh, the other things are yeah, there. Uh, since we have this scatter plot now, I want to show something you about uh, analytics that uh, Tableau supports. So as you can see here on the left side of the data panel, we have this tab that is called analytics. And if you click on it, we can see different things, that, uh, different analytics that Tableau supports. Uh, for example, uh, on the scatter plot, what we can do is that we can do a clustering by clustering, we mean that uh, fields that are close, they are neighbors together and they have a similar uh, behavior, they are grouped in several groups. So the algorithm that Tableau is using for clustering is the kappa means. So let's say that we want to do a clustering to this visualization. So we go into the cluster box here and we drag and drop it and immediately we can see that uh, a small window that is shown above the visualization panel and we drop there the cluster. And now we have a cluster. You can see that we have different colors for the first group and uh, different colors for the second group. The number of clusters, it's up to the person who is doing the clustering. Automatically, I think it's two, but uh, we can try and type three and see what's happening. So now we have three clusters. You can see three different colors. And of course, uh, the variables that uh, Tableau is using are the sum, and the, or the sum of profit and the sum of sales. But uh, if you want, you can add more values from your dimensions or from your uh, measures. Uh, yes, yeah, something else uh, that uh, I wanted to show you, it's Let's say that we have the, uh, this type of visualization, which is uh, sum of sales per month from the year 2001 to 2011 to 2014. And here, what we want to do is we want to create a trend line. And how we can do that? And since Tableau supports the analytics, we can go to the, to the trend line box here and drag it. And you can see there are different trend lines that Tableau supports, like linear, exponential, polynomial. So if we drag it and drop it there, now we have a trend line for the sales during these years. It's really easy. And the last thing I wanted to show you today is that uh, we can have a visualization, an interplay visualization, which will play for you step by step until in the end. And how we can do that? Let's say that uh, we have this visualization here, and uh, we go to the data panel, and we drag and drop the order date. Let's say that we'll do this visualization based on the date, and we drag and drop into the pages box here. And immediately, you can see here on the, the right side, that uh, Tableau has shown up this uh, field here, and it has the play button. W here you can uh, manage how fast it will play the visualization. And if you click play, then you'll see the visualization moving forward and showing you for every year how the number of the sum of sales has changed during these years, from 2011 to 2014. Let's do that again. So this is a good way to tell a story about your data, about your visualization. Uh, yes.
I think that we are done for today, at least from my part. I don't know if you have any questions. No? It's working. Uh, well, maybe while uh, people are thinking of uh, real questions for uh, Stavros, I'm just going to echo what uh, the example of Chris was uh, showing you. Um, I guess there are problems with uh, dynamic or living papers, right, in terms of archiving and referencing and so on. Um, but uh, I guess sometimes when you don't have a solution to problems like this, just having reasons enough why it should be done that way uh, could stimulate the uh, emergence of a solution. So um, just to repeat the question, why could a uh, skill like this, for example, be helpful to librarians? One thing, uh, and I'm giving you a point of view from the side of the faculty, if you like. Uh, one thing faculty is struggling with is underpinning uh, policy with real data, or at least presenting it that way in other format than static PDFs. Right? Faculties don't exceed at that, don't excel at that. So if you imagine a librarian that is a whiz at this kind of visualization, uh, or uh, capable of advising uh, scientists to publish scientific papers in a dynamic format with all the problems that that entails. Uh, potentially making a step forward of really producing scientific knowledge in a way that can underpin policy with scientific data. So the examples you show with just managing a, a biological threat or, or, or natural hazard um, like earthquakes. Uh, or you could think of a number of examples. Um, it's really a skill that's lacking at faculty, and it's a skill both technical and at communication level. So uh, then you can imagine yourself a future librarian becoming indispensable in that little niche. It's it's the you throw this around and <laughs> Okay. Um I, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> you were going to invite everybody to go and have a drink yeah. now. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, actually, uh, so Tableau, one thing, one thing you could do, actually, is uh, Tableau has been very responsive if you need to have a trainer come in, in your local group. Uh, so I've been, I benefited from that. Like, the Tableau trainers are great. And uh, if one of the things is you could say, well, we want to host one for not only the library, but, you know, some faculty and other people in your group, uh, so do like a, a 30, 40 person uh, training, they, uh, the, the Tableau training people usually uh, are, are responsive and they might come and do a training to help you get, you know, get set up as well. Um, so that's, uh, that, that's helpful. Just wanted to mention that as a possibility too. Um, and if you're trying to convince people at your institution to do this, <laughs> That's also a great way to, as an intro, you know, just invite some people to that and get them um, started on it, and then you, have, you can have conversations about how you move forward doing this. But any questions for, yeah. 
every <laughs> Hi. Yes. Um, I was wondering if uh, there's some built-in support for real-time data. If I would just um, well, I had actually this conversation with Miguel just previously on the break. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see the data in real time uh, because at least what they say in one of the tutorial is that you have to refresh the visualization in order to see changes. To see changes. But uh, if you do this type of visualization that I showed you in the end with the pages, that it's a plain visualization, while you, the, the data you are connected, you are live all, uh, always, it should be possible with uh, some with some delay, let's say, a small delay, actually. Yeah. But I'm not sure about the real-time data. But it should be possible because the connection is live. So imagine that you connect to a, a database and you are getting the data from there. Yeah. Uh, of course, Tableau is running some queries using this query language that they are using to the database. And I'm not sure how many often they do it. But okay. yeah, with, some, with a small delay, it should be possible. I guess that that will be programmatically possible with just uh, refreshing the view. Yes, yes. Uh, every time. But every time that you refresh the visualization, the view of visualization, then of course you will be able to see the difference yeah. in your visualization if the data are coming at that uh, in real time. Okay, thanks. <coughs> Who wants to drink? <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Severus. <laughs>